One out of every three bites of food that you eat is pollinated by bees. We're talking to the Backwards Beekeepers and how you can help save the bees on today's BFD. I'm here again with beekeepers Russell Bates and Kirk Anderson. So tell me a little bit about the origin of Backwards Beekeeping. Well, the origin of Backwards Beekeeping goes back to um, a guy named Charles Martin Simon who was a beekeeper who kept losing his hives to mites and kept trying to save his bees by putting the chemicals on them. Well, the chemicals that, that 20th century industrial beekeeping decided you needed to put on bees were all about trying to eliminate what were seen as the pests that infested bees. And the thing is, is when you apply that to something that's been around a lot longer than you have, like bees, it tends to be a short-term solution with bad long-term consequences. Backwards beekeeping is all natural, no chemicals or pesticides. How did you found the Backwards Beekeepers Club? Uh, my wife got very interested in the idea of keeping bees. We wanted a hobby for relaxation and a way to kind of get connected with our food. And th uh, through a lucky circumstance, my wife got connected to Kirk through a, a guy who has a, a honey supply store in downtown LA. Kirk Anderson started beekeeping in 1969. Look at that. Do you have a long tongue? Um, Here. I, uh, I, uh, Try some of that. Tell me, tell me <laughs> about cake. He said, well, they want $15 for 60 pounds of honey. And I said, God, that's outrageous. <laughs> so I went and ordered some bees and started beekeeping. And he started to kind of get us interested and, and get us exposed to the idea that you don't have to tell the bees what to do. You don't have to try to figure things out for the bees. You don't have to put chemicals on your beehive. And that it can be fun and relaxing and really, really um, enlightening about the nature that's all around us here in LA. So do, are you a believer that it is a combination of all of these different side effects that's causing colony collapse disorder? I think in 1992, I read an article where it said all the feral bees were dead because of the Varroa mite. And I was up in the Hollywood Hills painting the house, and there was one hive under this part of the ceiling, the roof tile, and over in the corner was another hive under that roof tile. They were flourishing because they're, they're not manipulated by man. That's the big difference. They're not given foundation. They're not fed corn syrup. They're not fed soy flour as a pollen substitute. They're left to their own devices, and they're doing great. Yeah, and no one wants to eat chemicals. No, a lot of people love eating chemicals. <laughs> And, well, that's true, I guess. And, and genetically altered things. So, like, it looks like bees, but it's more than bees, really. It's more about just being backwards. That's awesome. Now, say someone wants to get involved in backwards beekeeping. Where do they start? Well, there are a lot of ways to start. Our website is a great way to start. It's backwardsbeekeepers.com. We have tons of information that's organized by topic, and we have a lot of instructional videos starring Kirk Anderson, who's very funny and engaging, <laughs> uh, that tell you a lot about th any, any aspect of backwards beekeeping that you might want to know about. You'll notice in LA and other places, you see people now who have goats and chickens, people that are weaving, crocheting, knitting, gardening, doing everything by hand goes backwards is the new forwards. There are plenty of things you can do in your own life to help augment the bee population. Click the link below to find out what they are.